Hello and welcome back to Strictly Between Us. It's part three of week 11's episode. And in this part, we're talking about what we want to see from the future of the series, which at this point is the semi-finals next week. Maybe. There's not a lot of the series left. No. Um, so let's talk about the semi-finals. I think, you know, it, we're really down to it now and mm. it's time to talk about who doesn't deserve to be in that semi-final yeah. and as much as I have warmed to her as much as I think she's really grown and improved I think out of the lineup Kim is probably my pick not to go through to the semi-final I just don't think she quite cuts it technically she still doesn't fully sell it for me on the personality front the entertainment mm. factor I think everyone else on that roster will just bring more to a semi-final. So I hope she goes out on a high. We've already predicted that she might not, but I hope she goes out on a high, but I just think it's time for Kim's journey to come to an end. Yeah, it's brutal, but I do think having a week out of the competition, which obviously wasn't her fault, I do think it's it's been a disadvantage for her. Yeah. Uh, and so coming back with a cha-cha this weekend, um, I don't think she'll stand out from the other contestants who continue to excel technically. So, yeah, I think it could be curtains for Kim, but I'm also not sure whether Will will make it to the semis either. Which, had you said that a few weeks ago or, you know, a month ago, would have been so controversial. Mm. Um, but, I, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It, it, he seemed to have plateaued and we've lost interest a bit. I think. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's doing a foxtrot this week to Miss Saigon number. But given the foxtrot is probably one of my least favourite dances, I find it very slow, quite dull, and it's too... Uh, I don't think the great... The, the general public will be that familiar with Miss Saigon in comparison to Chicago, if that makes sense. It's not the same blockbuster level of track. No. Unless the, like a helicopter comes down on stage and really <laughs> blows it out of the water mid-foxtrot, <laughs> I am a bit worried about Will, but also I think it might be his time to go. I think it might, it might be his time to go. It feels like he's not bringing that really special something that he really was in the beginning of the competition and we I would I would kind of you know graciously thank him for his contribution <laughs> and say you know but good luck yeah. with the rest of your life the Ellie, <laughs> Ellie Taylor treatment right? yes <laughs> goodbye thank you and goodbye <laughs> Also, it might be worth noting that the Charleston curse that we identified over the course of this series seems to have been broken as last week Will Neller did not go out on his Charleston and now Molly's doing a Charleston as well. Yeah. So Ellie and Will have gotten through on Charleston's in the last two weeks. Um, it is no more. The curse is no more. <laughs> and we think that Molly is going to smash it out of the park with her Chicago themed Charleston. So the, just, uh, just as soon as you identify the Charleston curse, it's broken. It no longer exists. But it, what it does mean is whoever's doing a Charleston in the semi-final may have a chance at going through to the final and could even bring it back as their sort of previous dance that they get to do. Yes. So that's exciting. Yes, to sort of shine it up a bit, bring mm -hmm. something a little bit more spicy. But I mean, what else are you hoping for the semi-final, Mini? Well, next week's semi-final, I'd really like to see more tens, which yeah. is kind of like, that's controversial for me to say because we have had an awful lot of tens. Too many. But actually, I think what I mean here is that we've had a lot of tens, we haven't had a lot of 40s. I want to see perfection. Yeah. I think in previous years of Strictly, there have been a lot more 40s than there have been at this point in the competition. And it would be really nice to see somebody just, or more than one somebody, nail something, complete perfection, not a critique in sight. It's just all positive and everyone can just scream and add it to the Strictly History books and sail on through to the final. That's what I want. I want a justified 10 from Craig. So do I. I want to hear Craig just say three words. Fabulous. <laughs> Which isn't three words. I know it's one word. But that's. I just want to hear that. I don't yep. want to hear uh, a sort of a negative critique to sandwich. I, I don't want to hear that. That was absolutely stunning, but, you know, your thumb was raised yeah, no. for one second in the middle, and then he docks a point. I want just total perfection, and I want it from most of the lineup. Yeah, semi-finals needs to be full marks. Yes. Over on Dancing with the Stars, they have 40s for at least, like, three weeks yeah. before the final. And we so. have in previous years as well, we which does get a bit years. much, but I think, you know, we just want to be able to celebrate now. We don't want to nitpick, like, by the time we get to semi-final, we just want to have a great time and be blown yeah. away. 
100%. I couldn't agree more. And on that note, that's it from us, Strictly Between Us this week. Stay tuned next week to see our semi-final episode and go over to Twitter to tell us what you thought about what we had to say in this episode. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let us know. Take care and see you next week. <laughs>